Thank you. 
Christ, peace be with you. I'm going to read the epistle lesson from a Bible I had from my grandmother, Grandmother Carson. In the front it says, a present from Joe, not me, <laughs> not my daddy, my grandfather. Christmas 1954, it's almost 70 years ago that the gift was made. Uh, she and my grandfather had nine children. And I bet Father's Day around there must have been something. What do you think? <laughs> I think Father's Day around here is something too. But hear these words from the King James Version. I'm reading the beginnings of Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in the due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perventure for a good man some would dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
it up. So they'll, they'll sing again. At this time, could our little ones come forward? I have something to share with you. And if you're an adult and feel little, stay put, stay put. It's a little crowded. Yes. 
Prayers go always good. As we go to prayer this day, dear God, we pray that as Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, bless our church, we humbly pray. Bring, please, all the ones who need us and some helpers on the way. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we're thankful that you have supported us to be here and worship in, in wonderful ways, but in different ways than any of us thought, even as early as last night. But we're thankful for each one who is here, for others who are praying for us, from a distance, and we're thankful for your church gathered in all of its places, places that might be just so much more well off than we are right now, but we know that you're gathered with everyone and anyone in lots of situations that it would be difficult for us to choose to be there, but you're always there. We ask that you would be with everyone that we raise up and have hearts in this time of prayer, especially those who suffer disease or illness or accident, especially those that are experiencing losses of any kind, most especially any who have lost their way to you. We're thankful for how you raise up your people again and again and again. We're thankful for the Virginia Annual Conference to be able to meet this week and to, to do good things together and purpose even better things, even into this coming year. We ask your blessings on the pastors and all who are in ministry, every single member, that you would bless the ministry together that we would share in this community. We pray that you would always keep us in your love. And always let us serve you with everything that we do. We make these in all of our prayers in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus, who teaches us, your children, to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. No one is. No one is. Oh, Lord. So I will preach from here today. Before we begin, parents, is there any better way to support you? Mothers and fathers, I see you struggling. And it is hard. It is hard. My blood pressure is to here, and I got low blood pressure. So, so. All no. is good. All is good. Parents, feel free to make eye contact with one another. And if uh, some of our fathers need to take children, I need two volunteers to the playground, <laughs> they may. But make eye contact first before you take a child. <laughs> Mothers want to know. It's not our day, but we still have anxiety. So, all right, friends. Our gospel lesson today is starting in Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, and we will go to the 10th chapter, to verse 23. Yes, we will. It's 23. That's right, Atlas. 23. All right. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When we saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. We're going to 
pause a moment because we have sheep without a shepherd who are very overwhelmed. If a gentleman can go as well, that would be wonderful. As I told my 15-year-old, you are not a father. That face. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, let's pause and
This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that the things that bind us, the distractions, Lord, and Father God, today for the expectations we place upon our daily lives and when they are not met, how it throws us pause. Help us lay those aside so we can be present here with you. Bring us out of our holy comfort, Lord, our pews, our seats, our air conditioning, our stained glass windows, and remind us that we are the church. And where we meet, you are there with us. I invite you to pray for me and with me that may the meditations of our hearts the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, that all that we do would be to the glory of you and you alone. Amen. <laughs> Friends, there is nothing worse than a church member ringing your doorbell at 1030 at night. Hold. You can still ring my doorbell. Let me tell you the rest. Let me tell you the rest. There's nothing worse than somebody ringing your doorbell at 1030 at night as you're in bed with your murder mystery book, <laughs> I never solved them, and your husband's in the shower, and you've just checked the Facebook again. Why? It's a habit. And you hear ding, 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 and you assume it must be the phone. So you stare at the phone again. Doesn't do it. And you go, well, here I am, Lord. And you go to the door, and the church member in the dark says, what do you think they say? Well, you asleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> that would have been nice. No, no. They say, we killed Bambi. Get help. And I'm not fully clothed. Why did I answer the door? I was confused. I opened the door, and she goes, we killed Bambi. You don't know me, but I live next to your husband's church with the church member. I'm going to join the church. I just haven't joined the church yet. I am going to join the church. I've just moved in this week. You know, I was moving all the things into the house. I just haven't gotten to the church, but I do intend to come to the church. But you need to get your husband because we killed Bambi and your dog's tearing it apart. <laughs> all one sentence. I say... It's very nice to meet you. <laughs> One moment, please. I go to the shower. Michael, don't worry about what's going on, but you need to come outside. It's something with your church people. <laughs> what? I said, it's Bambi. He said, what? He pulls the shade. I'm like, it's, it's a whole dog's... Get on out here. Right? I pull on pants. Meeting a church minister's wife, pantless. I pull on pants. I grab a towel. I'm thinking, Bambi, I need to swoop the body up to bury Bambi, right? Mm -hmm. I get out there, pulling the shoes on. It's in a ditch. There is a church member there. And she starts talking. I don't know about what. I can't tell you. I get into the ditch, not my dogs. Good to know. My dog, my blue tick hound, is asleep on the couch snoring. <laughs> Praise God, right? Praise God. It is the neighbor's dog in his newest find who was dropped off. This dog's name is Peanut, or according to Emma, it's Cinnamon. Cinnamon. So I get into the ditch. What do I find? A dead deer. Alive, no, a live one. A live deer. Do I find Bambi? No. Oh, it's a full-grown mama deer <laughs> who is very much alive, very much bigger than the towel I brought, <laughs> right? But the dogs, not my dogs, are nipping at this poor dazed deer. I've got two, one church woman, one potential church woman, two church women, telling me the story of hitting this deer and some other things involved, I don't know. But I'm thinking, what are the odds of this happening? <laughs> Here comes Michael out the door, a couple yards away, and I scream, Get a leash! Michael goes. For the deer. <laughs> right? Right? Because I'm shooting <coughs> dogs. They will not get off the live deer to let the deer run. The women are asking me as if 
to do. I have a towel. I know I cannot pull the Great Dane. It's Winchester. Oh, no. It's Winchester. Great Dane off of this deer. Oh. Michael gets out there with a... Please. No, a rope. He can't find... <laughs> cannot find the leash. Say he does the town does not like leashes. We don't know where the leash is. He comes with a rope. Two women. I say, the deer needs to run. Now this is going a lot faster. This is slow. Get the dogs off the deer. The deer then goes, I need to run. Yuck. And Bambi's mother hits the road. Does she make it? No. The dogs start tackling the deer. I'm screaming, peanut or cinnamon. Whatever your name is. The deer makes it across the street. Both women are screaming. <laughs> I get over there. Then they take off in the woods, right? Where did the husband go? I don't know. He's getting bigger rope at the moment. <laughs>
but no extra sandals, no extra tunics. He's going to send them out into the midst of wolves with nothing. Now think about it. Uh, the Tolbert household is not a deer and dog incorporated. But there came a moment where someone needed help. And we could have said, we don't have leashes. They're not our dogs. We don't know deer, and neither do you, because that's not Bambi. <laughs> Try the next house down. Or we could, after this moment, say, we need to over-prepare for the next emergency. We shouldn't help any dog or deer until we have licenses and leashes and deer spray, and that deer was covered in ticks, so vaccines and stuff. We shouldn't help until we are super, super, super ready because, you know, that's what we should do. Those are churches, friends. Sometimes we say to an emergency, to a call out in the world, we say, we don't have those materials. We don't have that training. We don't have that in the budget. I don't know anything about that lifestyle. This person's going through this problem. None of us deal with that. You should try the next church down the road, right? Or sometimes, in our effort to serve, we don't ever get out the door because we're so focused on making it perfect inside for when the moment comes that we fail to respond when the call comes. These 12, they didn't hear a deer cry. They heard the cry of their Lord saying, come and serve. They're being sent out to all types of people. And they were not experts. They didn't have all the doctrine. They didn't have all the budget. They didn't have all the committees. They heard a cry and they responded. That's what it is to be sent by God. Now you might be saying, there's too many calls. There's too many needs. There's too many committees. Please stop signing me up for things. I would not have chosen to ride a deer that evening. <laughs> if I had stopped and said, you know, I did X, Y, and Z today, I can check off that I don't need to help this deer. I would have been within my rights. But when I heard that cry, I said, I, I'll go. That's what it is to love Jesus. Because in each and every one of you, the cry is different. It's when you feel it in your heart, when you see the need and you say, I'll go. I'll go. Not when I'm an expert. Not because I have to out of guilt. But because within my soul, within my inner being, my cells, I will stand up and go. And I promise you, when you stand up, when you respond to the call, God will meet you there. He will provide. He will give you the tools. He will give you the money. He will give you the volunteers. He will give you the people to love. And sometimes, friends, Highland, you might feel like you're running into the woods by yourself. I certainly did. But as I looked around, my neighbor, whose name I can never remember, it's Ricky. Um, uh, here he comes. Here comes Michael with a different gift setting. His gift setting would not have been to tend to the deer, it would have been to tend to the dog. But you know what? I was there to tend to the deer. And Ricky was there to tend to watching out for snakes. And the church women were there to cheer us on as we did it. <laughs> if you respond to the call, as you go forward, you will look and you'll see you're not.
not alone. You don't have to carry it alone. You just got to be willing to feel it. Know that God's going to meet you there. He's going to give you the tools. He's going to give you the resources. He's going to give you the energy. He's going to give you the laughter afterwards. It's all that God's asking for today. Amen?